Okay, so um, without any further ado, I will kick off proceedings. And what I wanted to talk to you about today um, stems from um, some of the work we've been doing in the lab in our, in our uh, my, my, my interest is in uh, a set of cells called B cells, which make the antibodies, which protect us from infection a lot of the time and really are, are what we want to get when we have a vac vaccination to protect us from reinfection with, with all sorts of things. Um, and, uh, and, but as I said, antibodies can also cause diseases, uh, autoimmune diseases and allergy in particular. And so some of the work we've been doing in the lab has, has been looking at the very basic mechanisms which control the cells which make antibodies and how they can go wrong in, um, in autoimmune diseases and uh, such as lupus. Uh, and in allergies such as asthma. And, and what we found is, is was a, quite amazing to us anyway, uh, a connection between these two types of diseases and the basic uh, ways that these diseases can emerge. And, and, and what I'd like to get across to you is that this very basic research is really meshing with what we're seeing in the clinics now and, and, and new clinical trials, where we're seeing a connection between these two mechanisms, which, are, which has the potential to give us some new uh, insights into treatments for these sorts of diseases. Okay. Uh, okay, the antibody. So antibodies, you've probably all heard about. Uh, this is the famous Y-shaped structure of the antibody, which was defined in the 60s and a couple of guys won a Nobel Prize for. Uh, there's been quite a few Nobel Prizes around antibodies, uh, their discovery, their use in various ways. So, and there's no doubt about it, it's, a, it's one of the, the major tools in, in, in uh, the biopharmaceutical industries. Uh, and of course, very important for our um, protecting us from infection. So, so just uh, a few basic things about antibodies. This is a protein, so you know it's a very small thing which will circulate around the body, and um, it uh, it has two major uh, components. It has up one end these paired regions, which we call variable regions, and they're called variable regions because if you look at one antibody and look at another antibody, these variable regions will be different. And the reason they're different is so. Uh, all your antibodies are basically different. That's because some will want to bind to and eliminate a virus, for instance, or a bacteria, or anything else which is uh, wanting to be eliminated from the body, or if you're unlucky, it may react to a self, uh, part of your self, so it may be an autoantibody, or it may react to an allergen, uh, such as found in peanuts and food allergies, in which case it may be a pro-allergenic antibody. So, but that's all about how the antibodies stick to something, and I'll show you just a bit more about that in a second. Um, and the other component, which I'll talk a bit uh, towards the end of the talk, is what we call the constant region. Um, clearly, it's the same between antibodies, but uh, uh, not all the time. There are basically different classes of antibodies which share constant regions and so share different functions. And so we'll get into that in a bit more detail. So this guy is a, a stylized B cell. As I mentioned, that's the cell of the immune system we talk about. So these are, are circulating around your blood, but most of them are found in your, your lymphoid organs, such as your your lymph nodes, which you feel swell up here and, and here or something when you have an infection, in your tonsils, if you've still got them, uh, and then your spleen is another huge source of them. Um, but what the, the, the basically specialized job that these guys have is to, once, uh, once an infection comes into the body, they start producing these antibodies, which can stick to the invading virus, bacteria, and, and the process of them sticking to it removes it uh, from the body. Um, neutralizes it and, and, and gives you long-term immunity should it come back again. So here's a, here's a you know, photo we took in the lab of uh, <laughs> inside a blood vessel. Uh, and uh, I just meant to show these guys here a, a beautiful red blood cells, which is the majority of things in the blood. And uh, but what you also see in the blood are these, these white guys, these white blood cells, which some of which are B cells, but are also a whole bunch of other immune cells. And, uh, and what you can also see, of course, here are the antibodies. And so <laughs> antibodies are found in all our bodily secretions. You know, there's a lot of it in our blood serum, in the, in the component of blood, which isn't the cells. Uh, but also in all, all our bodily secretions really have, have antibodies in some levels to, uh, uh, to protect us against uh, infections, which you know, typically come in through the surfaces where, where um, uh, secretions are. So, so, um, you know, so if you've had a vaccine, what you'll do is have a lot of these antibodies raised against the vaccine, which are floating around. and so. If you've had a tetanus uh, vaccine, the tetanus uh, um, bug comes into you, they're there ready to get rid of it. Um, but, uh, and so here we go. So here's, uh, here's uh, another picture we took of a, uh, of a virus cannonballing down the, uh, down the blood vessel. And, and, and what happens is that some of these antibodies, not all of them, but a fraction of them, will have these variable regions which will stick to, the, uh, stick to components of the virus. 
and uh, sort of changing pictures. We had to take a picture of someone else for this one. But um, the, um, so the, uh, so, and this is a slightly different virus as you can see, but so there are, there are structures on the surface of the virus or the bacteria or, or, or whatever really, where there's a basic lock and key. And so particular antibodies which have the variable regions which are particularly suited for the purpose will latch onto these guys. And this starts a whole process which there are many ways it can happen, uh, many mechanisms which can uh, serve to get rid of the virus or bacteria. Uh, but, but this is basically the initial step and these guys getting flushed from the system. So this is the major job which antibodies do. Okay, yeah, there's, some, there's the virus. Okay, so that's what we look, want antibodies to do, but sometimes, as I mentioned, they're not always doing uh, what we want and they can lead to disease. And so uh, one of the most frequent uh, diseases which are due to the uh, body's immune system attacking body itself, the so-called autoimmune diseases, is lupus. It's also called SLE or systemic lupus erythematosus. And it's a so-called systemic autoimmune disease. Uh, that means you, you, you can have organ-specific autoimmune diseases. So Shane Gray in the next talk is going to talk about type 1 diabetes, which is a, a very specific autoimmune reaction against the, the beta cells in the pancreas, your insulin-producing cells. SLE is a more systemic and affect lots of organs. And so uh, it's this very characteristic uh, uh, rash across the face, this butterfly rash in lupus patients. Uh, it's, it's actually no accident. It's a woman. It's very prevalent in women uh, as opposed to men. Uh, but there are a whole sorts of other complications, and particularly in the kidney, in bad cases of lupus. And this is actually due to uh, the two autoantibodies, antibodies which are reacting to components of the body itself. So um, uh, similarly, uh, in a, in, in, in a, this is an actually autoimmune disease. I mean, the, the, uh, the, the, the inflammation of the skin uh, is very similar, but this is a different class of disease. In this case, it's an allergic eczema. And so this is a, a completely different mechanism, it's thought. Uh, so it's not an autoimmune disease, but it's due to an allergic type reaction instead. So, so what's common between these two classes of disease is the antibody. But what is different, and, and so it always involves uh, antibody sticking to something it's not supposed to via these variable regions. But what uh, appears to be different between these two types of uh, immune mediated disease is actually uh, the class of antibody. And so here, uh, I've just uh, done a great colouring job here, uh, we'll fill in the numbers there, and, uh, and, and just, to, just to describe, these are these constant regions we were talking about before, so, you know, uh, amongst, within each class, the constant regions are the same, but you can, the B cells are able to actually keep the same variable regions, but change the constant regions as they uh, respond in a disease. It's quite amazing the, the way in which you can do it. Um, and so whilst the response might start off making IgG antibodies with this kind of structure hanging off the end of the variable regions, it can progress and, and what's called switch to make antibodies which have uh, this different constant region which is called an IgE constant region. And so it turns out that you're going to have identical antibodies in terms of the variable regions but with different constant regions and they, uh, what they do is enlist very different uh, what, we, what we call effective mechanisms in the immune response. They, 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 the result of them binding to something uh, recruits in different cells of the immune system to try and uh, destroy the target that it's bound to. So to try and um, uh, explain that a bit better, so this one's a little bit more complicated. So in the case of autoimmune diseases, such as lupus, these are uh, strongly involved autoantibodies of the IgG class. And you can see here, there are all sorts of ways that the binding of IgG to parts of the body. In here, we've got uh, endothelial cells on the on the inner side of, of, of a blood vessel, uh, and we've got IgG autoantibodies lodging at the uh, at the membrane here, where these endothelial cells are lining. And what they do once they lodge here, they form these what we call immune complexes, and they're this target to recruit in other members of the immune system. Actually, most of the cells, white blood cells that float around in your blood, are actually neutrophils. These guys here. And so they're ready and primed to recognize this concentration of autoantibodies at, at the base of the membrane. And then what they do is release all these inflammatory mediators and start causing damage to the tissue here because they're basically thinking if this is, this is something that needs to be attacked, it's something foreign that needs to be eliminated. But because the antibodies are binding to part of self, and that's where, the, where, that's where something's gone wrong, the sort of targeting of the system has, has gone wrong, then there starts to be damage to the, um, damage to the body itself in this case the blood vessels, and this, this is very typical, uh, particularly in the kidney, of, of, uh, of lupus. So in, in the case of allergies, however, as I mentioned, these, these are due 
uh, in, in a lot of cases to these IgE antibodies. And the way they work is, is well, it's not completely different, but it's quite different in that there are particular cells in the body. Uh, one of them is a mast cell, the other one's called a basophil. Uh, mast cells have a lot of them in the skin in particular. Uh, and, and, and what happens is they have particular things, uh, what we call receptors on their cell surface, which, which don't actually recognize IgG antibodies, but what they do is recognize IgE molecules. And, and what happens when we have an allergy is that we've made IgE antibodies against an allergen, house dust mite, maybe something in your cat saliva, uh, and, and, and these antibodies stick, and with, uh, typically there's only uh, very low amounts of IgE in your serum, uh, but it's very potent because this is a very, very, very strong reaction that the, that the IgE antibodies can stick to the surface of these uh, mast cells, and when they then bind to the, the allergen uh, that's uh, around in the food or, 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 the, or the animal secretion, we get this uh, release of histamines and other, uh, other inflammatory molecules from the mast cells, and that's what leads to the, the inflammation, uh, you know, like we saw on, the, on, on that woman's face with, with eczema. Uh, so, so although uh, IgG and IgE act in different ways, I guess in the end they, they're both sort of uh, precipitating this inflammatory reaction, which is, uh, which is saying there's danger here, even if there really isn't, I mean, in both of these cases. Okay, so, well, that's, that's all well and good. So what does it actually mean in, in terms of disease? And so, um, so we in the lab have been working on uh, the, the, and trying to figure out why the body makes antibodies that will bind to our cells, autoantibodies. Uh, and we know, uh, and, and to do that, you know, it, it's extremely hard to do in human systems. You know, not many people will be prepared to go through the sort of things required to, uh, to sort of dig down and, and, and figure out these very basic mechanisms. So we use uh, uh, mouse models, which have a very immune system very closely linked to, to of humans. And what we've done is, is look at a mouse model where if there's a particular mutation, inherited mutation, and this molecule called FAS. And so humans with FAS mutations have very strong uh, autoimmune type of diseases uh, like lupus, and there's another one called, called ALPS. And so we've looked in mice which have this mutation, trying to find out why these mice and, why the, and, and so why humans which have this mutation make autoantibodies like these IgG autoantibodies. And, and so you can see here, I'll tell you what the analysis process here is a very, very uh, uh, sensitive uh, procedure, but hopefully you can see here there's, there's not very many of these IgG cells under normal circumstances, but in the fast mutation circumstance, these are massively expanded. That's about 500 fold more. Uh, what we weren't expecting was at the same time to see a whole bunch of these IgE uh, antibodies being produced in this model of the autoimmune disease. So these mice don't actually get an allergic disease, but they're making this stack of IgE. So we're thinking, well, you know, this is kind of what we expected, but, but what's all this about? And, you know, is this actually happening in humans? So we actually did have a look in humans with fast mutations, and it's true, they have a lot of IgE, and just, no one's really looked at it because they had autoimmune disease, and so everyone's expecting IgG, but uh, so no one's really looked for the IgE, and it turns out uh, in humans with this mutation, there's a lot of it there, and so this has kind of triggered a lot of work in this area. And in fact, it's turned out when people look, as uh, the a, a group at the National Institutes of Health, led by Juan Rivera, uh, he's looked at uh, the SLE is the, is, is the disease, and they found a whole stack of not only IgE in those in patients with SLE, but found that it's actually autoreactive IgE, which is uh, something we, which is not involved at all in um, in allergy, but seems to be playing a role in, in lupus because you know the, the patients with more of this stuff have a worse outcome, etc. And so um, uh, it seems that you know. This, in, in conjunction with the work we've done, is really pointing to IgE as potentially being an important role, not in allergic disease, but in promoting this autoimmune disease, lupus. And so uh, this, this clinical data paired with our basic mechanistic data, which potentially can find, give us a way of trying to control this, uh, is really um, pointing, I think, to, some, to an interesting new idea of how we might treat this autoimmune disease and perhaps others. And, and I was really glad to see just recently that there's a, a, a drug, well, it's actually an, anti, an antibody directed against IgE. A lot of new drugs are actually antibodies raised against particular things, but this antibody can actually neutralize IgE. And so based on these new data, there's actually a clinical trial started at the um, National Institutes of Health trying this anti-IgE antibody to treat lupus. And so that's actually recruiting patients now. So that hopefully will have some, some good results and point to a new way of uh, uh, potentially treating this disease, which really has no good treatment at the moment except for anti-inflammatory drugs, which are which are okay, but have a lot of side effects. Anyway, so I hope that just uh, gives you a bit of an idea of how we can marry this sort of basic research uh, 
that is done in, in, in some of the labs involved in medical research, all the way through to the clinical research. Um, and, and, and the great thing is when you can push those two things together, get the clinical data from patients and be able to look at it in, in models where you can manipulate things, get more ideas, and then bounce back into the clinic and hopefully it, 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 with that to and fro between basic and, and clinical research, get some real ideas in advancing treatments in, in, in disease. Okay, so that's it from me.